Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we have one of the impact wrenches that pushed this channel into creation. The Capri Twin Power, which was loaned to us by an all-star viewer, Chris S. We've had a lot of requests to include Capri in our rankings, but we just had to start here with this one. But what makes this impact so special? Well, it boasts 1,000 foot-pounds reverse torque and 1,715 foot-pounds nut-busting torque. Yes, 1,715. Say what? That would make this the most powerful half-inch gun in the world. It gets even better though. That This guy is 5.9 inches long, a hair shorter than a Gen 2 M18 mid-torque. How does that even add up? Well, today we're going to find out by using our torque dyno to see if this mighty miniature is cut out for loosening nuts like this, which is sort of what their torque claim is implying, or maybe nuts like this, which would match its stature a bit closer. This one in particular is obviously used, but so are many of the impacts we've tested on the channel, including one that's still making the same power from more than 50 tests ago, the Mako MT2769. So if this makes anywhere close to the power it's slapping on the box, we should be in for a treat. The highest values we've seen on a half inch impact on this channel have been the Mako MT2779, which touts a mere 1600 foot pounds. Outside of these two brands though, there's basically nothing else on the planet that is bold enough to claim numbers like these, but if there is, you let us know. That's why today we're going to be comparing the dyno numbers of this guy versus the Mako, as well as let's throw in a Harbor Freight Earthquake for some context, as that gun really does make a lot of usable power, but isn't sort of the top on our rank list. The Harbor Freight sells for usually around 150 to 160 bucks, while the Capri Twin Power sells for 200. Neither of these coming close to the very expensive Mako guns, but that gun is at least something we know makes some real power. Realistically, being just 6 inches long and only 3.5 pounds, this Capri should probably be listed more on our mid-torque list than a full-size list. Not that we really have any air impacts on our mid-torque list, but considering this model claims the highest numbers we've literally ever seen from a half inch, she's certainly wanting to play with the big boys, so let's give her a shot at the belt. Our first test is called Working Torque, 5 seconds and forward. Here's the Harbor Freight Earthquake with the Mako also on screen up first. The Earthquake coming out with some early power, but the Mako gun doing its thing up to 523 foot-pounds. Let's see how the Capri handles this first Working Torque test. Three hundred and ninety-two. Well, so far not acting like a seventeen hundred and fifteen foot-pound impact, but both its power figures were in reverse, max reverse, and nut busting. That's both of the Lefty Lucy variety. So let's get into our ten-second max torque test, which is also in reverse. Mako takes on the earthquake again on screen. That earthquake coming out the gate strong would likely be good with some rusted stuff with that low end dynamic torque, but in this test, Mako guns really run away with it, making a whole lot more than the Harbor Freight here, 724 foot pounds. Here's the Capri Twin Power. Five hundred and thirty seven. Okay. Matching or just besting the earthquake with a much smaller form factor. It does prefer a reverse, but still not even in the same conversation as the Mako gun rated for sixteen hundred foot pounds of pixie dust. Our last test to settle the score is best case scenario, higher line pressure, fifteen seconds in reverse. If Capri wants to be at the top where their specs really live, they have some catching up to do. They'll have to surpass the Mako gun first, let's see that. Seven hundred and forty one, the Mako gun does not pick up a whole bunch more power from higher line pressure as we found out in the past. On the other hand, the earthquake did pick up some power from higher line pressure, but not enough to get close to the Mako here. Alright, come on twin power, you can do it. Four 
591. Not picking up as much as the earthquake from higher pressure, which usually makes sense for smaller guns. Which means, in this test, it finishes last. So what the heck is going on here? Well, when you compare it to cordless mid-torques, like the M18 shown here with an XC 6.0, and the Monster Makita mid-torque, which are both bigger in size than this Capri, it does quite well. Maybe that's a function of being an air tool, as when you start to get smaller, air tools seem to have that advantage over cordless still, but also this tool just makes a lot of power for its size. So if they had slapped 650, let's say 700 foot-pounds on this gun, like a mid-torque might, how would it do? Before we get to the full-size rank chart, where Capri is saying it belongs, let's take a look at that hypothetical with the mid-torques. Its power run would be turned into points here with 40, 54, and 59. Then power per inch, quite good, 5.9 inches long and made 590. Some pretty easy math there, 100.2 points. If this gun had advertised 700, it would have made only 84% of that, but that's still in good company with the rest of them on this list in that regard. At $200, not the cheapest, but also not the most expensive either, 44.3 points. That would total 381.5, putting this gun firmly into first place on a mid-torque list. But no, this gun makes 1,000, this gun makes 1,715, they say. It can replace a high torque impact, they say. Well, that means it becomes 1,000 tightening here, which makes for 59%, and that makes for 356.5, situating on the full-size impact wrench in 20th, right between the two Harbor Freight guns, which sort of makes sense, very similar performance to that air earthquake. If it was more conservative with its torque claims and stated that previous 700 we made up, it would bump it up quite a bit, but not enough to really make it more than halfway up this full-size rank list. Remember, you can get all of our rank charts sent to you by forwarding any purchase from our t-shirt store to torquerank at gmail.com. So is this Capri Twin Power really rated to be working on these? Well, no, but okay, maybe some of these, and these, no problem. But that's sort of the crux of the issue, isn't it? Of course, this model is going to be the brunt of our condemnation here, it says 1,715 on it, so of course we're going to call it out. It just happens to be one of the few that flew closest to the sun, and its reviews seem to reflect that. But what about everyone else? For the moment, we're giving everything who regularly gets 80 to 85% plus a pass on this channel, but the brands who want to make the next big thing in mid-torques or high-torques to edge out their competition, they've really got two options. Invest millions in better battery technology, better brushless motor technology, or simply just put a bigger number on the box for zero dollars and they sleep fine at night. As Ingersoll Rand said in our very first video, there's no standard for testing in the power tools world. As far as testing our tools, we have our test centers, competitors have their test centers, and due to the fact that there is no standard, it's difficult to get an apples to apples or one-to-one -one comparison between our tools, competitors tools, any tools in general. So unless you're gonna go all YOLO like the Capri did here with 1700 and be all obvious, who's really gonna know or stop you, us? We're just a tiny YouTube channel, we're not gonna reach 99% of the consumers out there. Harbor Freight, who's consistently, at least in our experience, in the low 60% of their torque claims on this channel, whether it's air, cordless, high torque, mid torques, minis, right angles, an air cat who makes some great impacts, but their rating system is all out of whack between models, and even IR, with their mini impact being a surprise lightweight compared to their other impact wrenches. It's important to remember brands like Capri aren't the problem. Numbers like 1,715 are on a half inch anvil, no less. Who knows if a half inch anvil could even take the impacting required to generate that. No brand is excluded completely from it. No rule of thumb like size, how loud it is, voltage, or battery cell type seem to be the determinant for power, so everyone is left with those numbers they put on the darn box, for better or worse, which means our job is not done. But I mean, thank God we love this stuff. Tune in next time where we hopefully can hurt some more feelings and break some more stuff. Thanks for watching.